you're on air with Jamie, and this is All In. Welcome to my real, raw, and juicy interview series where I'm bringing you never before heard stories from your favorite female entrepreneurs. Today's show is brought to you by my Quantum Business Club, my signature membership for course creators, coaches, and service based entrepreneurs ready to redefine wealth and success and quantum leap their business income. In today's episode, I am joined by the amazing Christine Fernandez. Christine is a marketing queen turned total style icon who is probably better known nowadays for her how I went from having nothing to wear to always having something to wear and feeling more stylish series on TikTok. Christine is all about helping you build the ultimate capsule wardrobe in order to elevate everything in your entire life. I don't want to ramble any more about this. Let's just dive straight into the episode. Oh my gosh, Christine, I am so excited to have you here today on the All In series because I know that you are going to share so much gold with us about your most recent business pivot. But before we get to that, what I really want to know from you is like in a past life in your career, you were a air hostess making videos for YouTube. And now you're basically the fashionista of TikTok. I want to know though, like obviously a lot happened in that time, but What was like the first little spark of, wow, this whole online world is a way to actually make money that made you pivot from your career as an air hostess? What was your introduction to this space? Okay. So basically, because I'd been flying, I, I flew and I was living in Dubai for about seven years. And in my mind, I thought, when I finish this career, I'm going to go back to Australia, use my degree and get a job in marketing or communications. 12 months of applications, everything rejected. Anything that I got was just temping in a job that I was not interested in, which sounds, you know, it was what it was. And I just thought to myself, there's got to be another way. And it was very, it was a very dark time for me. And I remember thinking one time I went and got a job and one night at that job, I was on YouTube. I don't know why I was on YouTube, but I saw this girl that I know and I thought, oh, if this girl that I know is doing YouTube and she can do it, then that means I can do it. And mind you, one of, you know, some of my odd jobs included photographing an Instagram model. And so I kind of got a little bit of insight. So it was all these little, they were like crumbs, you know, like universal crumbs in my path um, leading me to that direction. And then I basically thought, okay, I should start a YouTube channel. And I asked my friend, like, how does YouTube work? She goes, just post one video per week. And I knew nothing about the algorithm. I had no plan. I had nothing, but I was like, this is a good idea. And I was like, what am I going to post about? Oh, the thing that people ask me about the most, which is like, what's it like to be a flight attendant? And I decided that that was going to be it. The moment that that turned into, oh, this can be monetized and potentially a career path was when I started gaining subscribers and subscribers who were like laughing at the same things that I was laughing at. So we were having a really good time. And then like a a check in the mail came through and I was like, when I opened it, because it said Google, I was like, is this like, this is real. Like this is real. (laughs) And that's, I I don't know, you know, honestly, I could have received $1 And that would have just given me the insight that, wow, you can make money from doing something that you really love. That's really, really fun. But I think it was like maybe $38, something like that. But that was enough. That was enough to tell me that this could be a thing. Yeah, I love that. Oh, that's so fun. So fun. Yeah. And so then you built a marketing business after that. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, you know, when you said, you know, I was like a flight attendant and then now I'm in fashion and TikTok, that was probably a solid five year, you know, journey in between. Because what happened was I was in my call center job in aviation. So I actually returned to aviation, a place that I knew I was comfortable in. And then they ran a redundancy and I was like, please me. me." (laughs) Yeah. They manifested a redundancy. I was there for nine months and I was like, I'll take it. Um, And then I used, 
you know, they do a payout and yes. I use some of that payout to buy an online course. And the online course was teaching me how to um, create a social media marketing agency. And it just rung so true because I was like, yeah, I've got influ- uh, I've got um, experience photographing someone from Instagram. I see how that business works. I've got a YouTube channel. It's because it grew from zero to 20,000 subscribers in about six months. Wow. And yeah. And the thing was, I, I guess I was intuitively using the functions. I was intuitively, but also actively learning more and more Mm -hmm. and more. So like I would do something and then I would reverse engineer what was working. Turns out it was search engine optimization words. And so I was like, I bought this course because I was like, I see potential in myself and I see capability. If I can grow myself, um, then I can grow others as well. And that was how that, how I got into marketing. So I was a you know new business. I didn't really know who exactly I wanted to help, but I knew that there was so much opportunity and so much that businesses weren't tapping into yet this was like you know people were only just talking about doing Instagram like businesses didn't really know what it was there there wasn't such a role as social media manager yes and that kind of thing so I kind of entered that space um almost educating what was possible to business owners and then more time passed and I was like I realized I don't think I want an agency business model because the more clients I got the less creative I became or not not became but the less creative my role was it became more about people management Mm -hmm. because I had to start outsourcing certain tasks and that I probably hung in there for about 12 months and extended for another six months when I got into a business partnership and the girl that I went into partnership with she's very talented amazing copywriter viral copywriter um but yeah every time we gained a new client I'd feel more heavy and I was like, no, like, not like, why does it feel like this? Because I've put my entire heart and soul into this, all of my time, all of my stress. <laughs> it kind of, you know, it was kind of warranted. It wasn't in vain. It's because I was building this business, except the only thing was I didn't see a future in that. And then because I was so public, you know, being, um, you know, being a YouTuber and like being on Instagram, talking about my business building, I kind of felt very, um, I don't know whether it was shame or I wasn't, I didn't know how to say in public that I was going to slowly reshape the business. I just, you know, even though I'd invested in business coaching and all that sort of stuff, I didn't understand my way of saying that because in myself, I felt that that was wrong. I felt that I was failing that, you know, the reason why she's not doing this is because she's failing. And then, so what I did was I pivoted and I thought, Deep down inside, I think deep down inside and what I didn't acknowledge was that I wanted to be a content creator. I wanted to be like what a YouTuber does and what an Instagrammer does, but I was very much networking in corporate circles and I I think deep down inside I was not ready to embrace that because everyone that I was hanging out with was in a suit. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, you know what? The logical PR version of this is that I go into consulting. Mm-hmm. I'm no longer an agency. I'm going to consulting. And that was another 12 months. So <laughs> so everything that I chose to do was like this investment of an entire 12 months and another six months and like rebranding and all of that stuff. And then it just wasn't, it, you know, by the end of every 12 month stint was like, this isn't it. Yes. Oh my god! Do you know this is a theme in these interviews, which I find really crazy so far because I obviously did not plan it that way. And this is the stuff that people don't share on social media, which is why these are the questions that I really wanted to ask people. But the theme at the moment is people like you building these freaking amazing empires that are actually making money and then basically burning them to the ground because they realize that they're not aligned. They don't feel good. They're not actually what they really wanted. So I really love this. And what I want to do is actually redirect the conversation to your most recent pivot, because I know behind the scenes of this one that it really came from nowhere. And everything that I talk about on this podcast is all about intuition and quantum leaping and all of those. And I feel like your most recent business pivot was a whole quantum leap in itself. It was so wild how it unfolded. So can you tell us about how you became the 
TikTok superstar for capsule wardrobes. Yeah. <laughs> How I went from having nothing to wear. To always to having always something, something to wear, wear and looking stylish. <laughs> Right. My gosh, yes. you have now you're right. You know what? It feels like it came from nowhere. I swear because I was I I had now gotten into this place of marketing that I did love. Yes. I started working with healers and coaches and people in the energy space and I was like, this is it. And so to me, I'm like, we're we're in a good place and um I was in a program doing a fair bit of energy healing energy work it was like week on week on week on accessing the subconscious and you know just clearing the path I mean I felt it at the time but I didn't realize like you don't realize the power of clearing the path until the path is actually cleared and then something that's so great comes out of the blue and you're like what the fuck just happened so what happened was um again like little crumbs I was like happy with my business at the time. And I had to make a decision. Am I going to run another mastermind or not? And I, and then I kept on hearing and feeling this message. It was like, you don't need to make the decision now. Everything will be okay. So I'm like, this is some wild shit. Cause like as a responsible business owner who, you know, respects cash flow, you must make a plan. But the message kept on saying, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. And so, um, Anyway, in the meantime, in the background, I have these friends in the background who are like start talking to me about my fashion sense. So they start and, you know, they're like, oh, you're so good at this. And and I realized like I had kept this love for fashion like internal out of everything that I ever spoke about. It was the one thing I never spoke about. And um, so I had a lot of encouragement, encouragement. And then I had another friend who kept on talking about TikTok and she was just like TikTok, 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 TikTok. And I guess I was just in a place that I could hear it. Then one day, May 1st, I remember opening my eyes and I looked at the calendar and it was like May 1st. And I was like, if you're going to do anything on TikTok now, seems like a pretty good time. It's like a round number. Can you commit to three videos a day? And I mean, that sounds like a lot, right? But another one of the crumbs that I heard previously was from a TikToker who goes, you know, the way you got to treat TikTok is like throwaway content. Don't overthink it. Treat it like your Instagram stories. And that cleared the way for me as well. Cause I had this other thing like, oh, I don't want to add another task to myself. So May 1st, and I was like, I guess today's a good day. So I make a video and you were in my mastermind yeah. at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I I made one video and I had no script. I was just rolling with what I felt like I should say. And I and it started off with how I went from having nothing to wear. And then it was like, what should I say next? It was like, to always having something to wear and feeling more stylish. And I walked in my wardrobe. It was very much like an Instagram story. 24 hours passed and, you know, I gained like 100 followers. And I was like, this is cool. So I tell the mastermind, like, guys, like the same strategy as YouTube it seems to be working, but the real, the real one that changed it was like the second video. So it was day two. We're only on day two. And I had had a full work day and it was like, should I do it? The lights, you know, the sun's down. We don't have good lighting, blah, blah, blah. But it was like, well, no, you, you said you committed to like posting every day. So let's just make one. Don't overthink it. So again, how I went from having nothing to wear to always part two this one went viral. It was like viral for so long. I was gaining 800 followers per hour. And I only discovered that because on day three, I decided to like get obsessed with TikTok and start reading the analytics. Now, everything that I had learned in the past, in the, you know, in all of the years about marketing, I applied to myself in this moment, not from the marketing perspective, because I think that was just intuitive. Like what was coming out, the content that was coming out was intuitive. The part that I'm talking about is the technical side of things. Day three, I started a landing page and in two weeks gained, you know, nearly 10,000 subscribers to the landing, you know, to the email list. And then it's now been, what, May, it's now November. Is it six Six months months. yet? Yeah. Yeah. We have a product suite. We've got like nearly 2,000 customers. Wow. yeah. And, um, I, I work, I'm not in business partnership, but I do have a friend who happened. I feel like I manifested her too, because her major strength is systems yes. and that's my absolute weakness. Yes. And we work very, very closely together. Um, almost like in partnership, but, um, still separate businesses and we'll work with brands and everything is just flowing in. So I ended up being this fashion content creator and I think my soul really knew, you know, I, that 
that was a huge thing for me. And I think I probably forgot that in the scheme of building a business and thinking about avenues that I thought would work out. Maybe, you know, I just had to start believing that actually, you know what, I don't even think I consciously believe that this kind of business would work for me because I never saw it. Yeah. I, it wasn't an option. Like I didn't make it an option for myself to start a fashion business. It's wild. But it's because you literally oh. have, I've, I've got your TikTok open. You have 375,000 followers and literally millions and millions of views. Like the videos that you have pinned have 3.6 million views and 7.1 million views. And every other mm. video has like a minimum of like <laughs> nearly 30,000 views on average. Like it's wild. It's absolutely wild. And so the question that I ask everyone is like, I believe in business. There are really two pivotal moments. Like the moment that you decide, wow, like this actually could be something and you start the landing page. But I always think Mm. that there's like a second moment in business where you really commit to this being the new thing. And I call it the moment that you really, truly go all in. So can you talk us through that moment? Because I'm sure that that would have been really scary going from such a successful marketing business, hosting a mastermind, having Having all of these things to all of a sudden basically manifesting a business out of seemingly thin air and having mm. to kind of create on the fly. Yeah. You know what? For me, the commitment part actually came after the first product. So the first product was, so not before the first product, it was actually after. after. So uh, the first product was the Ultimate Capsule Wardrobe Workshop. Yes. Um, and that's still available. It was actually after that that I realized, oh my God, for the first time in my entire life, I've built something that is, we're going to go upwards. We're not going to be like, oh, it's time to stop this. Like, you know, uh, this isn't it because that's all I had known in the past. And I remember thinking at that moment, this is a decision because like you've never actually experienced being on the career path that you've wanted to be on. Everything up until this moment has been a major discovery session, but never this decisive moment that holy shit this is it yeah and whatever comes from this is like it's gonna be and honestly like it wasn't just a moment it was days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks even to now like I think I would say that I probably just calibrated to the fact that this is the one yeah and whatever expands from this probably just came into it what like two weeks ago (laughs) two weeks ago but you know what it is though it's because a commitment like a decision to commit is one thing but then a decision to commit and realize that that commitment is your actual reality Mm. that's when a lot of things change because this is a very public space so tiktok right it's public so any for any remaining qualms you have about being judged by people, saying the wrong thing, putting out the wrong product, it's all going to, you're going to have to come to peace with that when you say this is the direction that we're going. Yeah. So um, yeah, it started off as a moment maybe two months ago when we were coming up to the flagship, you know, coming, because that was a small workshop. We now have a flagship product and after, because there was so much kind of energy into that, that it hadn't dawned on me yet, you know, like that was a straight month of creation and not enough, you know, not, I wasn't thinking too you much just about. just flow doing the things. Future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just doing the thing. Riding the wave. Once, <laughs> riding the wave. But once that settled, um, that's when I had a bit of quiet space to really realize that like, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Are you going to keep going or what's the other option? Ooh, I love so, yeah. that. I want to know what that felt like, because this is actually a theme in my life at the moment. At the moment, there is a lot going on like energetically, astrologically. People are like burning their businesses down left, right and center, questioning everything that they've ever felt aligned with. So I want to know like the age old question, how does this feel? in alignment compared to everything else? Like when you say like, you just know that this is the thing, what does that feel like in your body for everyone listening? Because it's like, you just know, right? And th- that's really hard yeah. to like convey. It's like, it's like having absence of doubt. Yeah. Like it's like having absence of doubt in your path. The, and I, I've been saying this since I realized that this was the thing. I was like, I always tell my friend, her name is Cola. We work together very closely. And I say, like, no matter what, no matter what we're talking about, there's this underlying knowing, like a certainty. And 
you know, everything prior to that searching of maybe this, maybe that, oh, I do feel strongly about this. I felt very strongly about many things. I felt very strongly about being so, like solidly a YouTuber. Like, you know, I felt very solidly about being in the spiritual. I, at one point I thought to myself, you know, helping help healers and you know, people in energetics with marketing is the most aligned to me. I because I didn't see any other option. Yeah. But what this feels like in my body, it's like, huh, it's like a force to be reckoned with. It feels like certainty. It feels like, you know what it feels like? Like, like for example, you want to pick up a glass. For no moment do you think to yourself, I can't pick up this glass. You know, if you've been picking up the glass for years, like it's like you're well-practiced, you know, you're going to pick up the glass and then you're going to drink and the drink is going to make it to your mouth. It's just so natural. Yeah. And when something feels so natural, it's like, you know, occasionally you might think, oh, I got slippery hands. I might drop the glass, but it's going to be okay. And it's, and there's almost like a, the joy is intense. Yeah. It's like so immense. It's like you will work through anything anything because the joy outweighs the whatever Everything challenges else. you come across yeah 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 oh, I love oh, that that's so powerful so powerful so I want to switch things up a little bit because I know in these sorts of like business interviews people always ask about like you know your most successful moments in business and all of that but I actually think and I say this every episode I feel like we learn so much more from the things that don't go to plan than the things that absolutely turn out the way that we want them to. So what I want to know is a moment in any of your business journey at any point of it, that was a real face down moment where things just really didn't go to plan and it just, everything felt shit. (laughs) Yeah, probably the after consulting, because I had now been in my business journey for two and a half years. Some people had been in business for two years and were already killing it in the game. And it was me. I'm like, oh, this is my second kind of pivot, maybe even my third, maybe my fourth. And um, like realizing that that wasn't the path. This was so memorable because to decide that something is not the path you know, to feel it is one thing, to recognize that it's there, but then to decide it and then you don't even know what you're going to do afterwards. I remember feeling so dis- dismayed, so disheartened, like all of, all of the lower vibration emotions, frust- no, beyond, below frustration, despair, yeah. helplessness. Yeah. I remember going into our bathroom down, like we have two floors in the house. I went to the guest bathroom downstairs and I wept. I just was heaving, crying. like. And then I remember hearing this voice. Oh my God, I get emotional when I think about it. I remember hearing this voice saying, this is failure and you oh my god why do I feel emotional when I say that because it feels so real it said this this is failure and you're going to feel this because it's going to be part of your story so in the future when you do get on your path you will tell this story and it's going to be very important it's going to be a very important part of your journey because it's very you know to to try to you know to be around people and you know deep down inside they're waiting for you to succeed because you know, otherwise get a job. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I used to yes. hear. It's like, get a job. Just get and a I'm job. Like, yes. Oh. And I know so many people listening in hear that all the time and tell themselves that, like, is this really for me or should I just give up and get a job? Can I say something? You know, I, I did get a job. I did get a job. I got mentally exhausted. I was like, I, re- I well, my partner for one, he almost, it w- I don't know whether it was an ultimatum or not, but for anyone listening who's like, you feel unsupported by your partner, I definitely felt that I was unsupported. Maybe he didn't believe in me, but, he, but you know, devil's advocate, I was like, okay, maybe he's onto something, get a job. And I was like, all right, I'll get a job. And I remember being at that job thinking, oh, I hope nobody sees me here because if they see me, they're going to go, she's really not, she's really not doing well. But the job that I took, so I, I did I ever tell no. you? No. I actually worked, I actually actually worked in fashion. hearing it all. <laughs> okay. So my, my ego was telling me to get a job in marketing so that if anyone ever saw me, then it was, oh, you know, she got hired and it was a great deal. But you know what? I still couldn't get a job in marketing. Anyway, one day I see this ad um, and it's for a premium Australian label. And I was like, you know what? I photograph people all the time and I style them. I may as well learn fashion. Fuck it. Like, 
at least I can go there. I don't have to use my brain. Like this is what I was thinking. With the job, you end up using your brain. But I was in my mind, I was like, I'm not going to have to make decisions. I'm not going to be responsible. I can just get in my job and leave. And I got the job. And um, it was it was so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, all the emotions came up. Like when I was at the job, hoping no one would see me. But at the same time, I was like, well, why? I would ask myself, why do you feel like that? And I'm like, oh, I feel like that because I see myself as a failure being here. But I'm like, okay, what? Okay, that aside, why else do you feel that? I was like, because you you haven't owned your journey yet. Like you haven't owned that you are here on purpose. That everything that you built prior to this was built on purpose. So you're not here because you failed. You're here because you are like so headstrong about your journey that you will do whatever the fuck you need to do. <laughs> So that you can have more space, less pressure, and just chill out during this interim. Because, you know, eventually, like if you're still in the path of deciding what you want to do, it can get exhausting. And if you feel like things aren't working out for you because sales and all of the external things, sometimes it's really not that. Sometimes it's like your soul knows what you want. And therefore, it will cause you to behave in a certain way Mm -hmm. so that those things don't work out. Because that's you know that's not the the path that's going to bring you that kind of that kind of joy and so yeah anyway I think funnily enough now that I'm in fashion one of the key reasons I feel very confidently to stay in the game is because I actually know fashion I know fabrics I know shape I know what people want and I know what they think yeah so if it weren't for that job I don't know I mean we'll never know but I I don't think I would feel as confident as I do now I I feel I have staying power because of that moment that moment that's honestly so wild like that's so powerful and I think it's a real like testament not just to like your tenacity (laughs) to just make what you needed to make happen but also to the fact that we really do like when people are like life happens for you not to you I can't think of a better example of like how things have just flown exactly as they needed to for you, literally. Like you got a job that you didn't really want to get, but it so happened to be in fashion, which you've now been able to build a wildly successful Mm. business off. And I think that's crazy. What I want to know is if you could go back to that moment in time and tell yourself like one piece of advice that like Christine that was working in the fashion job and just thought everything was a failure and everything was shit. What would you tell yourself now? Having known everything, present Christine going back to past Christine. You know that saying, you might have heard this saying like, if you knew that everything was going to work out, how would you then behave in this moment? I would probably give myself some sort of iteration of that. Like, babe, you know what? this is so part of you like you actually need to be here yeah like you need to be in this job because you're about to smash it like so wildly like in the next few years so just chill out enjoy this enjoy the people enjoy what you're learning and like that's it just enjoy because I I think every now and then I was a bit stressed and yeah yeah that's it that's pretty much it I'll just say like if you knew that you were going to succeed like how else I, I I feel as though I I don't know whether that's words of advice or it's almost like reassurance. A bit of both. (laughs) But I love it. It's like lap it all up, enjoy it, just be in the moment. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I love that. So I have one more question to finish up on. And that Mm -hmm. is if you were to start your whole business journey, all five years of it, over Mm -hmm. again, would you do anything differently? Oh, that's a good one because – the reason we're able to move so quickly now is because of everything that happened. But I would probably, I really, like one of my values to this day is fun. The only thing that I would change isn't anything of the path. I would have been like, ease up, like ease up on yourself. Like just trust yourself. I think I didn't have enough trust in myself. So every time I pivoted, I felt like I was failing. If I trusted myself, I would have been like, I'm doing this on purpose. And then I would have been more bossy, (laughs) you know, like I would have been more sassy. I would have just been able to enjoy a little bit more. I would have been a little less stressed. Um, But that's where all the, uh, you know what though? That's why I got into energy (laughs) healing to begin with is because I needed to find a better way to, to like enjoy my ride. To do things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all energetic. So yeah. Yeah. So Uh, 
I Nothing. I wouldn't that. change anything. <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. But if I did, I'd have more fun. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Christine, thank you so much for your time today. Can you let everyone listening in know exactly where they can find you and what you've got going on in your world? And of course, I'll make sure that everything is linked in the show notes below as well. Yeah, so if you want to go from having nothing to wear, literally, to <laughs> always having something to wear and feeling more stylish, <laughs> you come follow, find me on, tic, uh, on TikTok. I'm Miss Fernandez, M I S S F E R N A N D E Z underscore underscore. We have a lot of fun with fashion over there. So it's fashion with a purpose and then, nah, nah, nah. um, and that's same username on Instagram. I do have the. Ultimate Capsule Wardrobe Workshop, which is an absolute game changer. We got lots of rave reviews. It really is. I've I've attended. It Did was you? amazing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> great, great. So that's it. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you.